Her Royal Highness Catherine, the Princess of Wales, alongside her husband, is one of the most popular members of the royal family. On duty, she is stoic, she is regal, and has dedicated her life's work to the early years, mental health, and tackling addiction. Off duty, she is a loving wife, mother, sister, and daughter. But her priority over the last year, understandably, has been her children. The princess has been a pioneer in her own photography, in royal photography. She studied before she became a member of the royal family at the British Institute in Florence, and she studied for a degree in history of art at St Andrews University, which is where she met William, but it did indicate that she had very much an artistic streak in her. But I think from early on into the marriage between her and Prince William, we could see a sense that she really wanted to be a pioneer in royal photography and the kind of images she was prepared to release to the general public. For example, we have seen images released from her family private life when she was just a baby. A photograph of her and her father, Michael Middleton, was released just last year to coincide with the launch of her Shaping Us campaign uh, tackling the stigma for the early years. It was a photograph taken in her Berkshire home of a baby Princess Catherine and Michael Middleton, her father, taken by her mother. When it comes to the photographs of the princess's children, she has chosen quite uniquely to release them on her own terms and usually taken by herself or a family member rather than getting an official royal photographer in. This does give us a sense that the children are really relaxed because the person behind the lens is somebody that they know. So for example, the first photograph taken of Prince George, first official photograph taken of Prince George and the Prince and Princess Wales, then of course the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge in the summer of 2013, was taken in Berkshire, the Middleton family home, by Princess Catherine's father, Michael Middleton, and since then we have seen a trend of every birthday of one of the royal children, it's usually the Princess of Wales herself who has taken a photograph released to the public. That not only reduces the need or the, or the demand for paparazzi photograph of her children, it does allow her to control uh, the images that the public receive of her children. It also means it's far less intrusive for, the, for those royal children. If you remember back to the days of Princess Diana with the two boys, Prince William and Prince Harry, there were so many paparazzi photographs of the two of them, and that is something both the Prince and Princess of Wales have been keen to avoid. Those photographs are also far less traditional. For example, the majority are taken in the family home, in the garden, whereas you look back to the 1950s or even the 1980s when the now King, then Prince Charles was growing up and the now Prince of Wales, then just Prince William, baby Prince William was growing up, they were far more formal, usually taken in a palace or in a formal photography studio. Whereas the Princess of Wales in a garden more relatable perhaps to the general public and again far more relaxed. But releasing her own family photographs has not been without controversy, particularly this year. 2024 has been an incredibly challenging year for the Princess of Wales and when she went into hospital for abdominal surgery, major abdominal surgery in January 2024, we did not see her and we did not hear any update on the condition of the princess for a number of months. That silence by Kensington Palace created a void and that void unfortunately was filled with a lot of unwarranted speculation. That speculation also led to a lot of misinformation, particularly on social media. So fast forwards to March 2024, where the Princess of Wales by then was secretly battling a cancer diagnosis and starting to undergo preventative chemotherapy, she decided to release a Mother's Day photograph of herself and her three children, Prince George, Princess Charlotte and Prince Louis. On the surface, that photograph appears very lovely. It was taken by Prince William in the grounds of their home, Adelaide Cottage in Windsor. But Royal Watchers Online noticed that the princess was not wearing her engagement ring, which once belonged to Princess Diana. And that enticed them to zoom in on the image. And it was there that things started to go wrong for the Princess of Wales and indeed Kensington Palace. There were a number of digital alterations in the photograph. 
to the point where photograph agencies across the world, very prestigious photograph agencies, including the Press Association in the United Kingdom, the Associated Press and Reuters all decided to pull that image from their agencies. The reason being, they claim it was manipulated. And then the speculation on social media just exploded and the narrative really got away for a time from Kensington Palace. So the following day, the princess released a tweet, a personal tweet, where she said, Like many amateur photographers, I occasionally experiment with photograph editing. And she apologised for any confusion caused and wished everybody a happy Mother's Day. On the one hand, many of the royal fans were saying the princess does not need to apologise for anything. She has undergone major abdominal surgery. She is still recovering. At that point, clearly, we did not know as the general public that she was also undergoing cancer treatment. There is no need for her to release images just to fill the void of this unwarranted misinformation. But on the other, she is the future queen and there was genuinely a concern for the princess's welfare. And it was just a couple of weeks later that the princess bravely shared her cancer diagnosis with the world. I wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you personally for all the wonderful messages of support and for your understanding whilst I've been recovering from surgery. It has been an incredibly tough couple of months for our entire family, but I've had a fantastic medical team who have taken great care of me, for which I'm so grateful. In January, I underwent major abdominal surgery in London, and at the time, it was thought that my condition was non-cancerous. The surgery was successful, however, tests after the operation found cancer had been present. My medical team therefore advised that I should undergo a course of preventative chemotherapy, and I'm now in the early stages of that treatment. The video shot by BBC Studios was taken in the grounds of Windsor Castle where she very openly discussed her cancer diagnosis. Off the back of that video, her brother, James Middleton, put a photograph of the pair of them on Instagram. It was a childhood photograph, them walking in the mountains. And James said, we will climb this mountain together. And I think we got a sense from that photograph of the intimate family relationships that the Princess of Wales still shares with her blood family, the Middleton family. And that is a family that has supported her right through her early years, through school, adolescence, and then finally to St Andrews University, where the Princess's life really changed when she met her future husband, Prince William. So in the early 2000s, both Prince William and Catherine Middleton were studying at St Andrews University. That is where they met and they managed to keep their relationship secret for a couple of years. But eventually the news got out the bag and the princess was subjected to, at that time, quite intrusive paparazzi photographs. They were following her not only in St Andrews but when she was also in London. And the rest, as they say, is history, and there was a photograph taken of the pair of them on graduation day in June 2003, in each other's arms, having completed their courses at St Andrews University, Prince William with Geography, the Princess of Wales with History of Art. And that photograph was released a number of years later in 2010, when Kensington Palace announced their engagement. And alongside that very candid image taken on their graduation day in 2003 was a far more formal photograph taken by the prestigious photographer Mario Testino in Kensington Palace, again in each other's arms to announce their engagement. And their wedding photographs, again, far more formal. They are, of course, the future king and queen. This all happens in April 2011. Those photographs taken by the very trusted royal photographer, Hugo Bernand. And this was a link to past royal photography inside a palace, very staged, very formal, and perhaps with a little bit of Queen Elizabeth II's influence. The transition to royal life was a help and a hindrance. She was no longer chased down the streets by paparazzi, but her life was perhaps no longer her own. She was partly funded by the public and her every move would now be scrutinised. Her public duties were well documented, every engagement had at least one photographer present, and she carried out a number of royal tours with Prince William, the first to Canada, a Commonwealth realm, in 2012. She also has visited with the Prince Pakistan, Australia, as well as Sweden and Norway.
We've mentioned the candid images of the royal children on their birthday milestones, but of course they were thrust into the spotlight on the day they were born outside the Lindo Wing at St Mary's Hospital in Paddington in central London, and that is where they are introduced to the world. And the prince and princess did have to pose with their newborn baby on the steps of the Lindo Wing in front of hundreds of news photographers lots of flashing light bulbs going off in their face, all smiles, even though the Princess of Wales had just given birth just hours before. But she did it all with grace, with stoicism, and was very dignified. Some very modern photographs of the Princess of Wales were released to mark her 40th birthday in 2021. The photographer was Paolo Reversi, and these three images, two in black and white, and one of the princess wearing a red dress, really captured the princess's personality, and it had a hint of royalty, but was also perhaps far more modern. And those three images were then released and put on public display in locations across the country close to the princess's heart. Berkshire, the place where she grew up as a child, St Andrews University where she met her future husband Prince William, and Anglesey, a happy time for Prince William and Catherine where they spent the first couple of years of Prince George's life. Prince William at the time was working as an RAF search and rescue helicopter pilot and the Princess of Wales was enjoying the formative years of Prince George looking after him and sometimes shopping in the local Waitrose. A couple of months on from the princess's public cancer diagnosis, a new photograph was released by Kensington Palace, showing the princess leaning against a tree, surrounded by nature. The photographer was one very trusted by the Prince and Princess of Wales, and that was Matt Porteous. And the photograph showed how the princess really had found sanctuary in nature during her chemotherapy treatment and to come to terms with her diagnosis. And the photograph was released to coincide with an announcement that the princess would start to undertake some limited public duties, including trooping the colour, something she has to carry out as a working member of the royal family, and Wimbledon, very close to her heart. She's very sporty and she is president of the Wimbledon Tennis Club. And then we get this wonderful video of the princess with her children taken by the trusted videographer Will War, who also shot the behind the scenes video of the Prince and Princess of Wales during the coronation. And it gave us a real intimate insight, a very honest and raw insight into the family life of the Princess of Wales, shot in Norfolk during the summer with her three children and husband, Prince George, Princess Charlotte, Prince Louis and of course Prince William, and the occasional uh, video shot of her two parents, Mike and Carol Middleton, showing the people closest to the Princess of Wales who she finds most important, and all of them, of course, helping her and supporting her through her cancer diagnosis and treatment. As the summer comes to an end, I cannot tell you what a relief it is to have finally completed my chemotherapy treatment. The last nine months have been incredibly tough for us as a family. Life as you know it can change in an instant, and we've had to find a way to navigate the stormy waters and road unknown. The cancer journey is complex, scary, and unpredictable for everyone, especially those closest to you. The Princess of Wales's life through the lens has been well documented, from those very early private family moments in Berkshire, all the way through to official royal portraits inside palaces. She is a keen amateur photographer, comfortable in front and behind the lens. But we're getting a sense that she wants to move away from those stuffy royal portraits, take back control and release photographs that she feels comfortable with. Instead of using official photographers for her children's birthdays, she takes the images. We get a far more intimate and relaxed insight into their private world and reduces the need or the demand for paparazzi photographs. Going forward, I think we'll see the Princess of Wales use social media as a tool to directly talk to the British public and indeed the world. But as future queen, she will still be expected to occasionally pose for an official royal portrait. To watch more, subscribe to our new GBN Royal YouTube channel. Thank you for watching GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel.